Yes? So you're setting it equal to zero at the moment. Is it realistic to assume that the weighted residual will ever exactly go to zero? Because we're essentially weighting the residual with phi i. Yes. And you're forcing that to zero. Yes. Can, is it realistic to assume that it will go exactly to zero? Yes, because uh, there are, let me, uh, so, so the question is, do I expect this weighted residual to go exactly equal to zero? Yes, one, because I have n equations to satisfy, right? As long as all of these n equations are all equal to zero, then the weighted residual is always going to be equal to zero for whatever g. And I exactly have n variables to play with. So I can expect all these n equations to be satisfied. This is not a coincidence. This comes from the projection onto the same space. Right? I'm looking for I'm looking for the, the, the object, uh, I'm looking for the point in this lower dimensional restricted space that is closest to this point in the higher dimensional space or the infinite dimensional space, which I started with. And I know there is always one point in this lower dimensional space that is closest, right? So at this point where I achieve the minimum distance, the, the inner product of the line between this and this it, with any tangent direction of the space is going to be zero. So that's why I can always find these AIs to make all of these weighted residuals to be exactly equal to zero. Okay, if, if you're projecting to a different space, then maybe not. Okay, good. Any, any other questions? Yes? So here, how do you know that the matrix A is not singular? Good question. How do I know the matrix A is not singular? That's a very valid question. I don't. The matrix A here actually can be singular. Is the matrix A singular or not? Actually depends on one thing. It depends on the boundary condition of the partial differential equation. Okay, so in this case, actually, when I did not specify any boundary condition, if you do this integration, I believe you are going to get a singular matrix. Okay, that's because I didn't have any boundary condition. So. Let me talk a little bit about boundary condition because if I don't have boundary condition, then may I'm supposed to get a singular matrix. Why? Because the differential equation itself is singular, right? If I if I don't enforce any boundary condition and uh, I'm trying to solve the differential equation, there is no unique solution. <coughs> you agree? Okay. So let's talk about boundary conditions. So I think I only have time to talk about one particular boundary condition that is going to help make the matrix non-singular. The boundary condition is called the uh, uh, essential boundary condition. And uh, a particular uh, type of essential boundary condition, let me change color, is Dirichlet boundary condition. For example, Dirichlet boundary condition, actually let me start with the simplest type of Dirichlet boundary condition is u at 0 equal to u1 at is equal to 0. So if you, if you replay all the formulation we have went through, what does this have to our formulation? What do we start with? We started with an, a type of approximation to the function, right, uh. With the, this boundary condition, should we still use the same approximation? Should we use the same space? No, we shouldn't, right? The space with that boundary condition becomes lower dimensional. Okay, 
any solution that satisfies this boundary condition cannot be represented with lower number of basis functions. Or when we go back to, to this, we no longer need phi 1 and we no longer need phi 4. Because phi 1, phi 4 are what makes it not satisfy the boundary condition. Okay? So we basically get a x h 0. <laughs> let, me, let me denote it that way. Is the, is the subspace of s h x h that actually satisfy the boundary condition. And now this is the only modification I need to the entire formulation. Instead of instead of approximating u h uh, as a linear combination of basis functions of x h, I use basis functions of x h zero. Instead of projecting the residual of the equation into the basis of x h, I project the residual onto the basis of x h zero. So. If I have these three elements, instead of having four equations, four variables, I only have two equations and two variables. I invert a two by two matrix, and I get the solution. Okay, and I guarantee you this two by two matrix is not gonna be singular. Yes? And it's not the same as having four basis elements and fixing the first and the last ones, A1 and A4. I believe it is not because you can't satisfy four equations with two free variables, right? So, so if you are restricting your degree of freedom in the solution, you need to get rid of some equations. You cannot, you cannot satisfy more equations with uh, a smaller number of variables. So that's kind of the philosophy of Galerkin projection is I'm going to have exactly the same basis functions for the projection as for the approximation. That kind of guarantees you to have the right number of variables for the right number of equations. As the good question before, it doesn't exactly guarantee the matrix to be non-singular because the equation itself can be singular, right? But if the equation is not singular, we should get a, a finite dimensional system that is non-singular. Yes? Uh, if you're not using the same um, space for the projection and for the uh, approximation, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, uh, should you pay attention that the, the dimension of each space is the same so that you get the n by n matrix at the end and not uh, Yes, yes. So so if you choose a different basis for the projection and for the approximation, called pitov uh, it's you need to make sure yeah the dimension of the space needs to be the same. Right. Any other questions? No? Okay. So yeah, we'll, we went through find an element in the simplest setting just to give you the idea. And uh, next lecture, we'll formalize the concept of find an element that, is, uh, that would work not just for Poisson's equation. And uh, uh, that'll be next Monday. So there won't be a class on Wednesday this week. I'll be traveling. All right. Okay, thanks.